Good afternoon, everybody. Long time no see. Long time no live. Just back again. Do a quick live for you guys. Doing a birthday set. We're gonna do a nice nude. I'm gonna do um old English. Um, old English colors. Uh, old English letters. With the birthday. Uh -oh. I can't see comments on this. Okay, there we go. Sorry, get started soon. And I'm actually gonna use a size 10 brush today. Um, hey, there you go, I can see you guys now. I'm actually gonna use a size 10 brush today. Fun, fun. Um, for you guys to see that, what a size 10 brush can do. Since a lot of people think that you need a bigger brush to do longer nails, but I'm gonna do a long set with um, a 10 brush. So hope you guys enjoy. Um, this is my 10 and it's a crimp brush. Right here. Um, it's a crimp brush, so it's gonna have a little bit of crimpness to it. So let's get started here. How's everybody doing today? Oop, let me this out. So we talked about brush sizes the other day on a Q&A. So now we're gonna show you guys how to do long nails with a tiny brush. Well, not so tiny. This 10 brush is actually a pretty good, decent size here. And we're gonna use this nice, kind of like a clear peach nude. So with this brush, I'm not gonna even worry about my ratio. I'm just gonna remove everything. I'm just gonna go right in really wet because I want a big bead. So I'll be able to pick up a big bead. Think about these smaller brushes. It's a lot of control, guys. Control with these brushes are pretty crazy. And then it's smaller, so it gives you a little bit more ability to control the um, the brush, pretty much. Shaping wise, big control factor here. Since it's smaller, it's going to be a little bit more stiff, so you'll be able to like mold the potter a little bit quicker than a bigger brush. The only reason I say this is because the bigger brush is a little bit softer, so you won't be able to get that crispness. Remember, the smaller size of the brush, the less monomer you can pick up on the brush. That's important too. So that's why I don't even try to remove any monomer. When I go into the monomer, I just come out and then I have make sure I have enough monomer on there so I can pick up a, a, you know, a bigger bead. As you see, the smaller brush gives the ability to pick up the bead, probably like a right size bead every time because a bead that may be too big using a bigger brush, there's a perfect size here using a smaller brush. And there we go. Very simple application. Um, I really don't need that big of an apex for this set. I just wanna make sure that it's a nice structure. This is about a, I wanna say a long, not XL. Um, it's not full tip length, um, it's about medium length. So a um, mid long to XL. So I wouldn't say this would be an XL set. gauging how much powder we need. Let's bring up just enough, you know? I like doing the two bead method a little bit better than doing one bead method. Sometimes, because we get a little bit more control of the powder. I'm gonna mold this out, make sure this is nice and crisp. We're gonna we're try to make sure we have a nice structure set, because we're gonna be able to doing just um, some old English Maybe some dates, year, and the word vir Virgo in Old English. That should be fun.
flush the cuticle area a little bit. The studio's a little bit warm, so of course, probably gonna dry up a little bit faster. It's gonna work a little bit quicker. If you guys haven't signed up for the master class yet or the advanced art class, it's in Chicago. It's officially available for you guys to sign up. For those of you guys that want to learn more art, um, we're actually be teaching some fall designs and some Halloween designs also. It'll be in the Chicago, October 21st, 22nd, I think. Um, I, probably, I think the flyer is pinned to my Facebook, so you should guys be able to see that. Okay. So you can still pick up a big bee with a small brush. So as long as you... And the monomer works perfect with all these powders. Um, my monomer I'm using right now is a medium setting monomer. I might as well bring that up since a lot of you guys will probably ask. As you can see, the powder is not runny, but it definitely gives you time to work with it. Um, if you're working with it, you use your brush to brush it down. This gives it an even consistency so the powder is not too runny and not too dry. That you can have a, you guys just sculpt your powder out here, make your shape a lot more crisp here. Um, I don't like using monomer that's too runny because it, it takes too long for it to dry. It takes forever. We're gonna do Ohio class. Oh yeah, I gotta book my flight tonight, Ebony. The Ohio class is pretty much full. I have one seat left, and then I had sent out the information to somebody, and if they don't re respond, then I'll 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 close it down. Um, I'm not gonna overbook that class. But Ohio Plus only has one seat left. Can't wait to meet you guys. I'll book my flight tonight, actually, and have all the sponsors send their kids out shortly. Send the sponsor information over. Make sure the student kids did that, get there. announced the Virginia DMV class probably tomorrow. I already got the location. I just need to figure out a date and then I'm gonna post it up and see uh, everybody from the DMV area for the salon ready class. But the Chicago class can be a fun class. It's gonna be class with Voltino and Vina. We're only teaching design there um, for the ones that need the design only. But my salon ready class is for people that need acrylic still. I focus on acrylic and dip. Um, make sure that you are salon ready in a sense. Um, very successful class. I already had it in Orlando here. And I'm going to take it to other states also. So we're hoping to make that fun experience there. Dallas again. I haven't been to Dallas, but I will be coming to Dallas actually. Um, close to Dallas, an hour away from Dallas, maybe. I have the problem whenever I host a class, I gotta make sure that I have the location and I know somebody at venue or something like that. That's the most important thing. I can host classes anywhere, guys. Just having the right venue, the right location, know the right people there, and also interest is also very important. So, yeah, I mean, the results from my salon rate class is you know, I even my students say no, it's, it works. Those, all my students are posting up all their stuff in the group chat and I'm like, wow, I'm so proud of them. A lot of them are working in salons right now. I'm almost done with the whole set here. That's, I like this nude. It's 193 by Chisel. It's almost like a light, kind of like a sandy nude. It's not bad. As you can see, I'm still doing two beading like I would on a bigger size brush because I'm just picking up a bigger bead with this brush. 
Even though this is a size 10 brush, I'm just use, I'm just making sure I have a lot of monomer on there, making sure that it's picking up a big bead. It's crimped, so it's gonna have a nice brown bead like I want it. So, let's take that. Let's go in, make sure I have a lot of monomer, keep the brush in for a longer time. I'll be able to pick up a nice size bead, even though it's a small brush. It just gives me the ability to pick up just enough powder every time, instead of having too much powder, having part overflow. Oh, this is actually perfect. Just a little bit more powder here. This is powder right here. Down here by the base. This is help it blend up so that I don't have to do too much work with my hand filer. Whatever, I can, whatever I can fix with my um, application. So one hand application, finish is probably less than about, I wanna say 10 minutes there. A little less if I wasn't talking too much. Give us a little bit more monomer because I used this monomer earlier to clean my brush. Yeah, yeah Dallas is a big, big spot. What new set am I doing? I'm just doing a nice nude. Um, and then I'm going to do um, it's a, a Virgo set. So birthday set kind of. I'll probably do some old English by hand. Old English letters by hand, like um, the word Virgo and also the old English numbers. It's also a nice touch. Let's do this. Remember the stiletto tips I'm cutting down to my coffin. They're not really that boxy the longer you go. Sometimes you gotta do a little bit of finessing and you gotta sculpt that tip out. See that? I with the powder dry and I'm just sculpting, making sure I'm making the corners nice and square. Because um, it's not gonna do that for you. A lot of times you gotta do that, and you can't do that when the pot is wet. You gotta wait until it's kind of semi dry, so it gives you the ability to keep the shape when you sculpt it. Mm -hmm. It's almost imperative to shape when you're doing application. That'll save you so much time later, I promise you guys. Always told you guys shape when you do application because it'll save you so much time later. So if you guys are taking a long time, you're taking more than 15 minutes to shape, then you definitely need to focus more on the shaping when you're doing your application. Um, your shape should really be there from your tips. So if your application is in control, good. That means that you have even, even shape. Just use my brush to shape. And the 10 brush definitely gives me the ability to shape a little bit better than most. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
flush my cuticles, so then I have to do less cuticle work. I love the shape that you can make with the um, brush compared to the layer. When you see me hand file, I really when you see me shape with the, the filer, you don't see me. I don't file that much. To be honest with you, um, at the end of the day, I don't file that much. I don't like spending too much time filing with the, the filer. It rem it actually makes the shape worse if the longer you you spend onto it. I know a lot of you guys probably sit there and like, oh, I love my shape, and the more you file, the more it gets weird. That literally happens easily. You don't notice it when you sit there, you're filing back and forth, back and forth. Your shape starts to change, because essentially when you're, you're, when you're shaping, you're actually removing the product. So the more you remove, the more it's gonna look different. Don't be too heavy handed with the shape and with the hand filer. Mm -hmm. Any tips on ombre? I've been doing ombre this whole time. You didn't see me? Look, just, just pretend like this is the bottom bead. Right? Let's say this is a different color. Your base color here. And then when I do my second bead, I just pretend like it's another, it's a, it's a complete, uh, it's the, the cover powder. That's your ombre. The whole time I've been doing the ombre, you didn't see it. it just has to happen to be one color. That's why you don't see the ombre. But about to use a different color, you will see the ombre right away. See, look, now I get my ombre bead. Place some ombre bead here. And the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna blend the bead in. There you go, I just did an ombre. Just happened to be just one color, that's all. Now if you did this with two colors, you would see an ombre. There's really no tip on ombre. The only tip I can give you on ombre is make sure you have a lot of powder control. If you, if you can't control powder, you can't time the powder, you, can't, you, can't, you don't know, understand when the powder dries or when, it, when it's uh, runny, you're not gonna be able to do ombre. Didn't even notice? Yeah, I know. I didn't hear you answer the question. The live person keeps saying live was paused. Live was paused. Hmm. Is it because of the music? Kayla! What are you you man? Might be the music in the background. I know they're always. I think Ariana Grande comes on Facebook is so in their. Limited exposure because um, they hear music in the background. Facebook is in their feelings when they see, they hear music. Ombre is turning into more of a basic technique now. I mean, before it used to be considered a design, but now it's, I think it's pretty basic because um, a very simple technique to do. A lot of people that are beginners can actually do ombre as long as they know the technique and they understand and control the powder. Um, for people that struggle with the ombre, it's just a very simple, you're just not ready yet. Um, you practicing ombre and you feel like you can't even control the first bead, then you're definitely not ready for ombre. You shouldn't be wasting your time 
trying to do something that you're trying to wish do something that you're not ready for yet. Um, I always tell people that have issues with Omri just to start working normally. Um, just start doing sets, understand the powder control. Eventually when you want to do Omri, it's going to become a lot easier. Beginners definitely the very ones that jump in and they want to do Omri right away. I'm not saying you can't do it, you just can't do it yet. Don't try to do something that you don't have the prior, prior understanding, you know? It's actually harder if you try to do it when you don't understand it yet. But once you have the understanding down, it's just very simple to execute. I never teach ombre. I teach them how to understand the part of the application. Then I teach, then I show them ombre and they're like, oh, I get it. This is how my class is like. There you go. Brushes for you of acrylics. And that was a 10 brush. Shape it. Very small, right? But got the job done. No, I, I yeah, I have a, I have plenty of modern back in stock, uh, Sarah. Sorry, it's in the it's on the website. Question S S the question I asked was do you leave the brush soap in the monomer and grab the bead a couple of times to make it less wet? Then grab the bead. No, I just get the brush in the monomer. I get the monomer and I come out and then I write into it. Because the brush is smaller, I need as much monomer there as possible. Because I'm I want to pick up a bigger bead. If the brush was bigger, then yes, I would have to get rid of some of the monomer before I, I go in the but since I'm using a smaller brush, I need my ratio to be higher because I want to pick up a bigger bead. And of course, a smaller brush has a maximum of amount of monomer I can pick up. So that's how I do that. It's all about ratio control and understanding how much monomer you need and for per, per bead. So like I said, I wouldn't do that with a size 14 or 16 because I'd be, I'd be pick up too big of a bead or it would be too runny because it's a bigger brush, of course. It soaks up more monomer uh, also. So that's why I, I do that. Hope that answered your question. I, I have probably have to reread it because there's a lot there. Mm -hmm. This Virgo design is actually pretty simple. It's just using old English letters. So I make sure I have them set nice and structured and then you go from there. Could actually match your toes perfectly. That's like a flesh nude. Mm -hmm. So after this is all Halloween for you, huh? <laughs> after your birthday is all Halloween now. Yeah, all Halloween. Whew. No, I think after that, I'm gonna use a nice cover of powder because we're probably gonna just do our artwork for the Halloween. Yeah. So we want to soak off every time we just change the design. I want, I already want like two different ones. <laughs> it's the season. They come every week. Yeah, that's why I'm probably use just a nice cover of powder. Make sure the design can be done just by removing the gel, filling it up. Hello, Yip, how are you? That's perfect answer? Perfect, okay, good. I always want to give you the perfect answer. Well, briefly, I read that and I realized what you, you were asking. And it makes sense. It's a big confusion for a lot of nail techs, you know. And there you guys go. It's simple. It's just very quick and see the shape. Very nice and crisp. Um, I really didn't spend a lot of time shaping. i be honest with you. Like, maybe that was less than what? Less than a couple minutes. Because um, I know that if I start sh shaping more and more, you have to be able to just shape and then stop and look at the nail, okay? 
a lot of people just go crazy ham on the shape and before you know it, the shape is gone. And as long as you do proper application, as long as you shape pretty good um, while you're doing your application, you're golden, the shape's already there. You know, why break something that's not broken, you know? I've seen people will sit there with a perfect shape and they just keep going in on it because they, they're, they feel the need to shape. Don't ever feel the need to shape, okay? Try to resist the urge to shape. <laughs> yes, listen to me. Try to resist the urge to just go ham with this, with this hand filer, please. Especially if you're using an 80-80 grit. That's gonna eat into it. It grit really well, so. You don't wanna go ham on that, okay? Am I in Nashville? No, I'm in Orlando. I've been partially retired from doing nails and just teaching and being a house dad, picking up my kids from. No, for a long time I've been working every day, all day, at the slum all the time, so that's all I know. Now I'm like picking my kids at school, dropping them off at school. So different to be able to see them during the day. I enjoy it, but I do miss doing nails. So I'm gonna go back to, maybe I'm gonna do some press sounds or something like that. And possibly um, in the future, probably maybe do some, some other stuff, you know demos and stuff like that and of course I got my teaching and traveling too but I'm enjoying being a house dad right now while my wife's in school and finishing up her program the kids are back the kids are now in school so I gotta drop them off There we go. That's it. That's all. That's all she wrote. That's all she wrote, guys. Just check cuticle to cuticle. Make sure all the nails are the same length. Um, it's important. Checking cuticle to cuticle because really you don't know how big the nail bed is. Sometimes some one nail is longer than the other. Trust me, when you have precision, every nail is the same length. When you take a picture, it just it just looks beautiful. Like I me, mean, it's it's amazing, guys. It's like that's all she wrote, guys. That was shaping. I guarantee you, that was less than ten minutes. He run in my mouth, actually, took my time. And of course, my favorite drill bit, the sharp, fine, five and one, cross cut. How hard is it managing a salon? <laughs> uh, owning a salon is very hard. It ain't easy, it's not for everybody. I had a live on that. Um, not everybody's ready for it, financially, mentally. Just imagine you're probably gonna be spending 60, 70 hours at, at least at the salon. You got no life, six, seven days a week, open to close. You said hand file first? I don't know why I started doing drill first, but I'll do I'll drill first. I'll hand file after, I guess. So I'm just gonna worry about this area up here. Actually, I'm not gonna do the reverse. It's gonna be more work for me later. So I'm gonna hand file first. I'm gonna hand file the base of the nail first, make sure everything's nice and even. Then I do the cuticle work. That's my finisher. This makes more sense. I'm not gonna try to be lazy. Use your 100, 100 grit. It'll be perfect here. You don't want anything too gritty because you don't want to, if you have perfect application, you don't want anything to eat into it. That's why people do hand filing, gives you a nice, nice, uh, even surface. This just goes up to just uh, the apex area, the cuticle area. After that, you can use a drill. I generally use a drill. A lot of, not, a lot of people try to go around it, this and that, but you can do that too, but I prefer using the drill because I, I got to go to the cuticle area anyway, so why not? But this definitely is very convenient getting the base of the nail nice and even first. Then you gotta do a nice buff and you're good to go.
Actually, really quick to be honest, because the flatness of this gives you a lot of surface area for you to file. But you do have to rotate because you don't want to stay in one spot too long. You want a nice curvature. If you're staying too long, it's going to eat into the nail. As you'll know when there's unevenness, you'll see it in the nail, and you'll be able to focus on certain spots. When it's a little bit lighter or shinier, it means the surface is uneven, because if you put your hand file like this, you wanna make sure everything's even. This is a good technique to know for a lot of people that are going to nail school and then they're gonna be taking their practical. You'll be able to, um, they won't let you use the drill in your in for the test, so. Knowing how to hand file definitely important. They probably teach you this in nail school also. I wouldn't do this if the nail was shorter because there would be no point. I just bust out my drill, but since this nail is longer, my drill bit is only this length though. It's gonna be eating in here and here, and it's gonna make it uneven. And I don't wanna use a metal drill on a surface that's very smooth like this. I wanna just smooth it out as much as I can. My hand file. Beautiful. Just like this should be done with application and everything in less than an hour. As long as you have all the stuff process uh, good. So yeah. Application, shaping, filing, cubicle work, everything should be under an hour. An hour is like a max. I don't care what length nails you're doing, XL, triple XL, um, at the end of the day, if your application is good, you do taking all the proper steps, your set should be done in less than an hour. 30 minutes is actually the prime. Finishing the set in 30 minutes is actually normal. You should strive to see, achieve that. That means, I'm not saying the design and everything, I'm saying like from your application, prepping, putting on tips, drilling, all that stuff, in less than 30 minutes. You actually make more money that way. The less time you take working, the more clients you can take, the more you pay yourself per hour. It's important for nail techs to consider paying yourself per hour too. I'm not saying to charge clients per hour, but know your set price, how much time you take. If you're doing a set for 50 bucks, but it takes you three hours to do it, you're not you're really making only like what? Minimum wage, under minimum wage per hour. A lot of people don't understand that. They think, ah, I made 50 bucks. Not the set. No, you didn't. It took three hours. So you subtract supplies and all that stuff. You really don't make that much. Probably made like maybe a ten dollars an hour at the supplies. As an LTEC, we're not here to make ten dollars an hour. Twenty dollars an hour is actually the ideal for nail tech. At the base level. A lot of times you guys probably don't realize that, huh? Two and a half, three hours max? Ooh. 
No. I would never ever take three hours in a set. Um, yeah, that's too long. You need to stay under two hours. Two hours is way too long. Under, under one and a half hours is probably the average. Under an hour is like ideal. Yeah, nice. I mean, the more you practice, 30 minutes, yes. <laughs> you guys, a lot of you guys think 30 minutes is actually very fast. It isn't. 30 minutes for you to do application and shaping and stuff like that. That should be actually uh, your idea, like your, your goal. Sometimes you guys think that it's, it's too, it's impossible. It's not impossible. It's not how, it's how normal, like that's how nail tech should strive for. Okay. I'm not saying that you have to do it overnight. I'm saying that you need to have a goal that you can reach. You gotta shave down your time. The more you work, I've seen nail techs work in this industry for five years and they're still the same amount of time. They take the same amount of time doing a set because they're too comfortable. They just think, oh no, this is this is how it's supposed to be, and they just stay that they don't push themselves to be faster or you know be more efficient. I see it in my students, you know. I see a lot of students coming in for me, and they're like, oh, I've been doing nails, and they, they do great work. But when I ask them how long it takes them to do it, they're like, oh, it's like two and a half hours. I'm like, no, no. You got three, five years experience. You're doing amazing work. No reason why, and you have a big clientele. There's no reason why you're taking three hours or two and a half hours to do a set. Uh, other than the fact that you're too you're comfortable. That's it. Being comfortable actually hurts you. It's nail tech in the long run. No, I'm not taking clients at all. I'm like I'm pretty much semi retired right now. I wanna do certain clients so I want some of my clients have been with me forever. Just to keep my, my, my skills sharp, but I'm not I don't have time to uh, schedule clients like that anymore. Transfer all my clients down to my staff already, so I still be doing lives and demos and stuff like that. But to be able to schedule clients and keep my regular schedules it's, it's hard for me now. And I feel bad, I wanna schedule them and cancel or not be able to have a spot for them every month or every two weeks. It's funny because in my salon ready class, I always tell students, hey, write down, right in the beginning of class, I say, hey, write down how long it takes you to do a set. They'll write down, I'll go around and, I, and you know, we leave that there on a notebook. And then, you know, we do our class and later on they do the set, I time them and like, and they'll be finished with a one hand in like 30 minutes and I'm like, how is it possible that you, you roll down and you did three, your, your, the set like this will take you three hours, but you just did a whole hand in 30 minutes. And they look at me and they shrug like, I don't know. Certain things you're doing with your set, you're not realizing. That's why I have that salon ready course. The way I teach that course, I teach them how to do time management. It's so important. Nail techs can't manage their time well. It's like your worst enemy. Now you guys are just not, it's not about your work. You're just sitting there BSing with your clients too much. I know it's, it's, I know it's like, it's okay. Like, you know, when you have clients come to your house, it's kind of comfortable and you're just chilling. Nah, <laughs> you need, that's your time, okay? That's money. You can't be sitting there chilling, doing this and that. Well, next thing you for you know you're taking three hours for a set that just only took you an hour. You could have gotten two other clients in. Paid you up stuff more for per hour. But that's each of their own though. Some people like to hang out with their clients and that too. I I understand that completely. So for me, business is business, you know. I don't want to be too comfortable. too much trying to be a friend. <laughs> I know it. Trust me. I, I've been there. Y'all don't think that I'm I'm, I'm I'm not preaching to the choir here. Like, I've been there. I've been, I've been like that. Sitting there, chilling with the client. I know what it's like. I get it. I'm just saying. Sometimes you gotta 
refocus yourself if you want to grow in this industry. Take value in your time more. Y'all can bullshit and talk all you want when, you know, she takes you out for a drink or something. I don't mind that at all. When she's sitting in the chair, that's, that's, that's when you're getting paid. That's when you're working. You can kind of say, I'm not telling you to be a robot, but I'm, not, I'm telling you to keep it brief and focus on your work. Sometimes it affects the quality of your work too. You're not focused on what you're doing. That's just my opinion though. I don't want to tell somebody how to work on their clients. But, there you go, one hand done. Definitely a teaching moment. <laughs> yeah, you want to listen to me, go ahead, you know. I do, I make sense, right? Right, guys? When I tell you guys something like this, I make sense, right? Not just blowing hot air out of my ass. But like I said, sometimes you just need to hear it. You know it yourself, but you just need to hear it from somebody else. Saw that. That's all I ask. Just don't tell me I'm taking too long doing a set. And you sitting there getting the four on one on the, your whole client's love life in the last month. <laughs> That's where your set time is coming. <laughs> Keeping up all the gossip. Your nails are a lot less bulky after watching me? Oh, that's great. That is free. I appreciate the support and the, the feedback. There's more, you know, I, yes, I'm limited to how much class I can teach, where I can teach, but the time I do spend on doing even my Q&As, when I'm answering questions at night, and you guys support that. Um, even that, you know, I appreciate all the support and all the platforms, this and that, and the products and the classes, but I, I started doing this back in the day, just people just to watch and kind of say and, you know, help wherever I can. You never know when someone just needs some simple information that will help them along their career. And that's why I do it, so I, I, re I really appreciate when people come on and tell me how much I've helped them, even though I've never, like, you know, met them or that, it, no, just from watching the videos or quotes or just my content that makes a content creator like me an educator and a content creator you know it makes it worth it my, my, my time you know I put a lot of my time out doing all these videos and all this content for you guys so when I see that it's actually helping people that, that makes it all worth it I appreciate that appreciate the kind of words and congratulations on the less bulkier nails Nail King now. I never want to give myself titles like that. That's why even if I've done celebrity na celebrities nails, I never say celebrity nail tech. And I just feel like putting like names like like labels like that. Just a lot of pressure. <laughs> the Nail King. I can be a nail dad. There's there's a lot less pressure being a nail dad, right? Because nail dads aren't perfect. <laughs> no dad's perfect. But being a king or whatever that stuff is now, I'm good. I'll leave that title to other people. All my clients are celebrities, so I don't really tell, need to tell, me, tell people I do celebrities' nails. A lot of people try to strive for that. This is awesome too, but it's not as hyped out as it is. It's people make it out to be, to be honest with you. They're just clients like everybody else. Except they're not as frequent. 
<laughs> they're them clients, they're just not as frequent and they can cheat on you at any time. <laughs> it's just a game, y'all. Yeah, I can have a client that's just plain James she can be with you for the, for the rest of your life, your whole nail career. Who would you prefer? If I, if I were to tell you you want to be a celebrity nail tech, just do one time one in your career, or you trade a client that can be with you for the rest of your, your whole career, what would you choose? Who's gonna who's gonna make your pot? Who's gonna fill your bank? Who's gonna get you that bag? It's almost sound like a one night stand compared to a relationship, huh? I'm just kidding, y'all. I'm just bullshitting right now, but it is what it is. If you think about it, doing a celebrity is like a one night stand. Is there a safe for a bit to use the cuticle work? Um, I have the same bit that I just used right there. The one I use right there is a, a, a sharp bit, but I do have the same bit. Um, it's a safety bit version of it. But if you want a safer bit, you gotta call, look for the safety bit. Um, they're a little rounder on the edges, so you won't cut the client. But if you want, the one I use is sharp because I'm, I'm, I'm used to my cuticle work, so I can just go in with a sharp bit. Fairly easy here. That's nice. That's finesse, y'all. That set's probably on, I'm pretty sure I'm at what, the 48 minute mark? If not a little bit longer, but I'm definitely under an hour right now. See that nice and clean this is what the client play pay for y'all screw the design this client i can she can leave like this with a top coat matte top coat i still charge her good money that's good structure okay good shape good structure it's gonna last gotta wash your hands so now i'm gonna do some designs pretty much all hand art 47 minutes, see that? Y'all see that? I, I know how to break down my time so well that I can just predict how long I've been doing nails. Just, that's because I know how long it takes me to do certain steps. So I can pretty much ballpark everything. Um, no, I'm, on my end I don't have access to, because I'm doing live, I, don't have, I can't see like what my timing is, but generally when I see it, um, I can feel it basically, because I know what my skill says that, I know my time management. Mm. Yeah, nice and clean. Cuticles nice and flush. We ain't gonna get no lips there. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this dry a little bit. And then I'm gonna do some. I guess I said 48 minutes. It was 47 minutes. I'm up at one minute. So I was bullshitting too much, talking too much. Should have been less than that. I understand. Uh-uh. Okay. <clears throat> I think this is acetone here. So I'm gonna use my black gel art paint and my liner brush here. Do you have any gloves in stock since I do pedicures? <laughs> I don't I don't do gloves, it's too much to, to stock up. 
that's it. So we're gonna do, you wanna do the, the date first? Yeah. Let's do. Old English numbers. So was it 1998? 1998. 1998? Yeah, 98. Okay. I didn't know you were that young. Jeez. You look older. Mm, I like this guy. Good job. Some more English here. Oop, I messed that one up. Remember, as long as it's not cured, you're good to go, okay? Can you see this? Okay, you can. I'm using my black gel art paint, so like you can see it's not gonna bleed out. It's just gonna stay in shape. Um, that's actually very important when you're actually doing like artwork like this. Okay. Last thing you want to do is use gel paint, and what it does is it's going to bleed out, make everything all chunky. Uno, one. Nine is probably the hardest one. <laughs> of course, because it's the most complex, but usually with Old English, you do the framework first and then everything else will come in to play. Um, fairly easy. As long as you do everything in cycle. Uh, do we finish up that later? Actually, this is actually, um, doing this actually is very fun. If a lot of you guys want to practice Old English, it's actually a very fun technique to do. I, I recommend it for those of you guys that are, are, want to focus on um, perfecting your control or your gel art paint, um, how to do like, you know, gel art, whatever. Um, I think English, Old English is definitely, when I first started practicing how to do line work, I definitely use Old English. Just go on to like Google and just like look like old English letters and stuff like that and get yourself a nice brush and just practice on like a swatch stick or something like that. Um, it's actually fairly easy to do. Of course, you guys, I want to learn how to do it. Yes, you can get a sticker and just stick it on there, but let's be honest, 
Isn't that more satisfying to do it by hand? Come on, guys. Let's be honest. It just makes, it just, you're like a whole different nail tech. You can do this by hand. It's a flex. Okay. Everybody's down to flex. Plus your clients, it's, it makes your nails worth more. Your clients know that you have some kind of skill. <laughs> Just build a frame first, and then I go on through it and I do everything else um, later. Don't want to try to do everything at one time. Work slow steps. Anything with artwork is always the same. Um, just the same motion. Make sure, you, make sure you plan out your next move first. And take your time. Now the client's paying for your artistic ability. <laughs> this is when they're paying for your artistic ability. Okay, guys, so take your time. Make your money. Just as long as it looks good, the client will pay for it. I guarantee you that. Artist, or you can be a nail tech. Once you be able to do stuff like this, you'll venture into the nail artist field of it. No longer a nail tech, but a nail artist. Be able to use a brush, be able to do precision work, and produce stuff like this. 1987, you said? Mm -hmm. You younger than me? Oh, no, actually, look. It's not younger than me. Sorry. As you can see, this is a gel art paint, my black one. It's very smooth, right? Um, it hasn't bled out. It just stays in shape. What year were you born? Hmm? What year were you born? 88. Oh, okay. You're a year older than me. I turn off. It's been a while since it's been slow enough to like to turn off. This seems like tedious work, I guess. This actually develops a lot of skill um, that you guys will need in the future for a lot of art techniques. Later on, um, brush control, very important. Be able to visualize certain designs also, how to do it.
and your loved one that comes together. <laughs> Done here. Well, I gotta do the word Virgo too, but I'll probably do that off the live. Get my client out of here. I got something to do. I want to do the old English on live for you guys to see how simple it is to do. Um, it's not really that hard. As long as you guys practice, I don't see any reason why you can't do this. Just like how I'm doing right now. It'll be fun. Good practice. I might even incorporate this into my class um, as in getting my students to practice how to do this first before they come to, to probably do it for the, the advanced class, the art class. Have students practice how to do Old English to make sure they get their their um, stability down and their brush so they can do line work and stuff like that. All this is is line work and color blocking, you see? And the product has helped me out so much. Look at that. One nine eight seven. Are you sure seven? Sure. Is there anything is there anything you want to tell me first? Can we do flames on the thumb like that? On the what? On the thumb. Yeah, we can do flames. <laughs> nah, I got it. Too high. Well, I think I did too high. So long since I've done flames, I'm doing it wrong. Miss that bitch again? Okay. Right, wait, hold on in front of me. You know what? I want to do that logo right there, but. You can, whatever you want.
Now I got to care. And that's it. The other side, I'll do Virgo. And we top coat. Let's top coat. Have to be here. So this is gel art paint for a lot of you guys that don't realize what I was using. Um, it's black and is pretty much smooth to draw with if you see your nose, but it doesn't bleed out. As in like, you guys notice that when I was doing the whole thing, I wasn't caring because it, it won't bleed out um, at all. And that's why important, you can't use gel polish for that because once you start drawing with gel polish, you know what happens, right? It's a little bit longer, let it cure. So nice. This is my uh, non-cleansed top coat. One coat, and it'll be shinier than. What we should do over here is we should do just V I G O H I R V I G O. Hmm. All right, guys. I'm gonna finish this up because I got somewhere to go, so I'm gonna end the live. But like I said, I'll post pic I'll post on my time timeline for you guys on the final look. Um, but like I said, I'm gonna do the, the word Virgo on here and then finish off her birthday set. I'll see you guys later. Thank you so much, and I'll see you guys tonight for possibly a Q and A. Answer some questions.